Cease your futile prayers. All our prayers have been in vain. And Cosmic Skeptic is here to explain why. Now, just as a disclaimer before I begin, because I'm bound to offend a bunch of the people who are going to watch this. When I talk about prayer, I'm only talking about prayer concerning the three Abrahamic religions which dominate today's religious population. So if you don't conform to organized religion and you have your own personal spirituality, or you're offended by atheistic logic, then this video probably isn't for you. I take grave offense at atheistic logic, but uh, that's just because it's so bad. Now, if you are religious, then you'll be very aware of the attributes that your religion assigns to your god. The most important one to focus on for this topic is the fact that all three of the Abrahamic gods are supposedly omniscient. This means that they are aware of everything that has happened, that will happen, and is happening right now. Another important point is that they all supposedly have a predetermined plan as to what's going to happen in our lives. And here lies the paradox of prayer. The type of prayer that's brought into question by these qualities are the type of prayer concerning asking God for something to happen. For instance, if you ask God for your favourite sports team to win, or for a family member to overcome a disease. The important point is that the outcome of these prayers will have one of two options, i.e. it will either happen or it won't. The team will win or the team will lose, the family member will survive or the family member will die. It's always going to be one or the other. Now the issue is, God already knows which is going to happen. He already has it because he's already planned it to happen. The future isn't a future for him because he's outside of time. This means that God already knows if the team is going to win or lose. God already knows if the family member is going to survive or die because it's all part of his plan. Now the problem here lies not with your assumptions, it's that you apply them inconsistently. You correctly say that God has timeless foreknowledge of the outcome of the event, but that you seem to think that the prayer comes as some new information to God. In fact, God has timeless foreknowledge of your prayer as well, and can adjust the outcome accordingly. Now, to head off the inevitable objection that this somehow invalidates free will, God's knowledge of your prayer is contingent on your own free choice. Your choice is not contingent on God's foreknowledge. So when you pray to God asking him for something, it will either already be part of his plan or not be part of his plan. If it's not part of God's plan, then it's not going to happen because God's plan is final and God's plan is the best plan. This means it's pointless to ask for something if it's not already part of God's plan because it's not going to happen anyway. On the other hand, if it is part of God's plan, then it was already going to happen regardless of whether you prayed for it or not. You seem to be operating from the assumption that everything that happens is part of God's plan, which as far as I could tell is just folk wisdom and not really scriptural in origin. Now, in Christianity, obviously God has a big plan, the whole of Christian eschatology, so if I say pray for Jesus not to return, obviously that's not going to happen. But I think on these smaller scales of time, we have some room to move some furniture around, that's why I have a YouTube channel trying to change hearts and minds. This is only a paradox if you believe your God to have the attributes that are laid out in one of the three Abrahamic religious texts, that is the Bible, the Torah, or the Quran. And so, Jewish, Muslim, Christian fundamentalists, I'd love to hear your response. Wow, was it my imagination or was that atheist not a complete dick? I sincerely hope that you've been offended by at least one thing in this video. Oh, damn you! Atheists just really get off on this conceit that they're offending and triggering people with their superior logic. Sorry, but I'm just unimpressed. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. While you're at it, subscribe to the YouTube channel of my friend James Bishop. This guy has been doing great apologetic work for years on Facebook and on his website, and now he's doing stuff on YouTube, so definitely check it out, link is in the description.